Hello and welcome to Media Ring Yarning. I'm Catherine Little and I'm filling in for Luana Grant. Today our guest is Cody Bedford. We'll get to her in a second and you're going to love the conversation. She's a fascinating creative. But before we start, it's always really important that we make a little bit of space for our acknowledgement to country. So from wherever you are, we acknowledge the traditional owners, we acknowledge the ancestors. If your ancestors are along for the journey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, And of course, we're really happy that anyone who's in the room has joined us. That being said, it's now time to have a chat with Cody. Cody, awesome to have you with us today. Tell us where you're from and who's your mob. Yeah, uh, well, I'm Cody Bedford. Um, if you recognise that last name, we were a big family in the East Kimberley there. I'm, I'm a Jaru woman of Halls Creek, from around Halls Creek, which is, yeah, a, a long way to get to. I'm currently in Sydney. Um, I'm about two days away from where I'm from, basically. So big country, happy to be on Gadigal land, though, and happy to be here on uh, Media Yarning. Awesome. And I'm looking at the background bef- behind you. That looks like a creative background. Tell us what you're up to there. Oh, I'm just at uh, Belvoir Theatre, actually. I feel like this is my second home. Um, and it, uh, it really has been the last year as I sort of plod along with my play. Um, hopefully, in this environment, the theatres will be opening up soon. Uh, we just, just definitely need more support for the arts. Um, and getting people back in the theatre will hopefully help that. But of course, health first. Uh, we don't want to endanger anybody. But yeah, at Belvoir Theatre, who, who does a lot, a lot actually to um, support Indigenous artists. Mm-hmm. And you've recently won uh, a rather large award relating to theatre. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, that was um, the Bell Naves uh, award, or Fellowship, where um, I, I'm quite honoured actually to, to get this because the previous winners include people like Leah Purcell, uh, Jada Alberts, Nakia Louie, like Ursula Jovich, Megan Wilding and um, Katie Beckett, like they, these people I look up to and I just am inspired by my peers and to be kind of named beside them um, and it's just an absolute honour and I'm really happy uh, that uh, the Bell Naves Foundation actually do make the effort to support First Nations work. Um, I think it's a Belvoir commitment, Belvoir theatre commitment to put at least two First Nations shows up a year. And um, I am was announced for one of the shows in 2020, but unfortunately the world is as it is. Um, still looking forward to uh, October is possibly when my play might be going up. We'll just have to wait and see. I still keep writing it though. <laughs> Hopefully it'll go ahead. And I know you did mention some big names there and they are household names, but you know, your own road to success is pretty good. You've worked on things like Mystery Road, Grace Beside mm-hmm. Me. So your name is probably up there. Tell me, what would you, you know, when you're looking at at pioneers of the industry and, you know, cognizant that, you, you know, you're right in there amongst it. Is there any advice you might give to people, younger, younger people looking up going, oh, my goodness, that's Cody Bedford? Oh, please, I don't think anyone has ever said that. <laughs> um, well, it was me. I was in a, uh, my high school library doing drama when I pulled out Leah, Leah Purcell's play of um, Box the Pony and that just, I'm like, oh, my God, there's, black fellows on stage and there's black fellows in the media um I it was just a very foreign concept to me and that sort of turning point of seeing Leah Purcell there made me go oh I can tell stories and my voice is worthy um and I I was a journalist first actually for SBS um and that was the kind of form of telling stories so um I guess you know, it's a cliche to say, oh, don't give up on your dreams. But if you have a passion like I did for storytelling and just wanting to tell good yarns, um, your voice definitely is worthy no matter what your background is. But it's particularly for Indigenous First Nations people because I am biased. We are the best storytellers in the world. Um, but also we need to take ownership of our stories for for too long. Um, Non-Indigenous people 
um, with probably their heart in the right place, but they've, they've kind of taken over our story and, and made films back in the day. But then you've got the pioneers um, like the Black Theatre group who started here in Redfern down the road or uh, Leah Purcell, Rachel Perkins, Warwick Thornton, who have started, you know, owning their stories and taking that step. And that's, I still aspire to do that. Um, and I hope other people, like younger people, not even younger people, anyone, any black fella that, that wants to tell stories can. You can write it. Just write. It's interesting you mentioned the Black Theatre Group and I'm going to give away my age here now, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but when I was young, my mum was uh, studying there at the University of New South Wales and that was something that we did, was go and watch the Black Theatre Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember even as a very young person, uh, we were living in Kingsford and, you know, obviously my mum at the university had a, little, had a very big Indigenous support group. But the ability to walk into a theatre where the plays were about Aboriginal people, the performers were Aboriginal, the writers were Aboriginal, it was fantastic. I, I, I still remember how exciting it was to this day. Um, how, do you, how do you describe that to other people? I guess it's just seeing ourselves on, on TV. And even though, like, for example, the last film or one of the last films I, I saw in a theatre and I got really excited about was Black Panther. And even though I'm, I'm not of African descent, it was just lovely and inspiring to see black and brown faces on screen. It makes a difference. It gives you self-esteem. It gives you self-worth. And that is the power of media and art. And I, you can't like put a figure on that value to a kid, you know, switching on the TV. Because sometimes I know for me that was growing up, TV was my escape. And I loved shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I'm quite honest to say that Buffy the Vampire Slayer saved my life several times. If only she was black though, then I would be like a superwoman myself. Um, but shows like that for me, or I was, I was, Looking for empowering women and thinking, oh, I could aspire to that. But just brown faces on stage and on screen. Um, the movement in the last 10 years for Indigenous uh, TV and film has just, it's been described as a golden age. And I really have to agree. Things that, like uh, Red For Now, which kind of started the main, putting black faces on the mainstream, in a mainstream slot on TV just really elevated us and you know um the self-worth you get as i said from watching our faces our stories things that are written produced and directed by black artists black writers black creatives is just just i yeah shivers down my spine it's just inspiring and but also it shouldn't be inspiring it should just be and and it is we getting there it's um it's an interesting it's interesting that you bring it up at this point because a couple of years ago I was sitting out at Gama of all places having a chat to Rachel Perkins and and I brought up the lens right the the need to have the Aboriginal lens because there is a difference in it not only in the nuances of what you might see but also in how we react to the content mm. um but she said to me you know and and I thought it was really interesting at the time she said you know it is awesome to see what our black creatives are getting up to right now and where the spaces are going. But to get here, we needed a lot of support and mm. uh, people to remove barriers. We needed people to give us opportunities. We didn't need you to do it for us, but we needed to help learn the ropes. And obviously that's something that Media Ring is intrinsically involved with, and that is trying to create opportunities and open opportunities for black creatives to be more engaged and, and more prolific in the media landscape. Would you have any ideas on how, uh, I guess, our partners who support Media Ring could do better or even open up new opportunities in this space? Oh, um, I just... That mission statement for me is is inspiring to the point like you you want to put blackfellas in in the industry and uh, empower us. I guess it's a, 
I started out as a cadet journalist for SBS. And for me, I, one of the, I was talking about this recently, one of the most kind of, I was really excited. I remember Carla Grant called me up and said, you're moving to Sydney. And this is from a, for a country WA girl that was like, oh, we're doing this. So I moved over to Sydney and I thought, let's just say, I thought Perth was big. I used to scream driving on the freeway there, like shake. When I got to Sydney, it was a, it was a big culture shock. And I was very grateful SBS like gave me the job and, and, and took me in. There was just one incident though of I'd be with the cadet, other cadet journalists and they'd introduce me and um, it'd be like, these are the cadet journalists and here's Cody, the indigenous cadet journalist. And for me, it was like, ah, oh, I'm just in this, in this box. Um, and I guess, especially with the world today and the movement that is going, we're trying to, you know, I'm not just an Indigenous journalist. I'm not just an Indigenous writer. I'm a writer and I'm worthy of being here. I'm not just here to tick boxes. And I think that's where we're heading. And I'm really passionate about getting to that point where we're not introducing, here's the Indigenous cadet. Here's, here's the cadet that we're, that we're going to chuck in and to do all the coffee getting because that's, that's, so that's what you do as a cadet. You get the coffee, you're the one getting the cup of tea. But yeah, just those sort of shifts in language, mm -hmm. that for me really matters because, you know, the fact that I'm still talking about that yarn and it's been 10 years since I was a cadet journalist because it really did have an impact. Like, oh, I'm othered. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I don't know, just that, yeah, little things like that. But in saying that, I am, like, SBS is such a great supporter of Indigenous stories and so is ABC. They've got their own Indigenous department. I'm still yet, though, as a, as a writer, to get a job with a commercial network and that's what I would love to do. I'd love to be chucked into a commercial show writer's room Um and I think that's kind of where the gap is at the moment. We can't leave it to the ABC or SB or public broadcasters to give out these jobs. We need, like, if you, you really want to close the gap, give jobs, have more of the presence of First Nations people, like, you need, let's think of the commercials as well. Um, that's just from, my, like, my point of view from the TV side. Um, I'm not sure what else is going on in, like, theatre and radio. Uh, but yeah, definitely, that's what, kind of what I aspire to. Mm. I think. <laughs> well, no, I totally get it. Totally get yeah. it. And I, I want to pick up on a nuance there because when you're talking about the need to change the language, it's not that we don't want the pathway because we need the indigenous pathway. Mm. It's that when you label it, it potentially becomes something different as opposed to being just another cadet. Um, and it's certainly, I think it is something that probably needs to be addressed and people need to be conscious of. Yeah, I just felt when they would do that, I just felt less mm -hmm. in a weird way. And it's hard to explain. When I talk to other black fellas about it, they get it They're like, oh, yeah, that happened to me. It just, my self-worth went down because it was just an add-on. If we're serious about the, like, pathways, like, give the pathway, give all the pathway, not just the little box. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's that's kind of my view on sort of those cadetship kind of placements. But um, it, I feel it is changing. To be positive, it is changing. And things like the Media Ring, which, by the way, Media Ring gave me my first job as I left the ABC and went into this freelance world. I was the secretary, I think. I think that's what it was called, or admin. I... Um, yeah, that was my first job with Media Ring. So it's kind of come full circle now. And I, I remember telling them, oh, I want to be a writer. And it was such a great avenue to meet people and have like-minded people really passionate there to get Indigenous people jobs and in the workforce and learning about the, the media industry because it is different in radio, theatre, arts, uh, TV. It is different and there's not one little thing you can be doing you can be doing a whole range of jobs in this industry that's why it's so valuable 
That's an awesome conversation. I think we're running out of time. You're a very busy woman, so we're not going to hold you up for much longer, but I will ask one more thing. What advice would you give to anyone wanting to jump into the industry right now? Oh my gosh. Can we please have more more writers? Thank you. I know everyone wants to be up in front of the camera, but it's so important to have black fellow writers in the writer's room. I actually had this conversation on ABC radio that we were talking about the, the future of cop shows, but particularly in this like world of you know, the black lives matter movement and our cop shows, perhaps glamorizing the police. And I love crime shows. I don't know a black fellow that doesn't watch law and order SVU. That's our guilty pleasure. But in saying that, I'm like, well, actually what we need to start looking at is putting diversity into the writer's room. So I just want to see more black fellow writers there. I don't want to be the only one, um, which I often find myself as the only one in the, in the writer's room because we do add value. We add different lenses. We add different perspectives, things that other writers didn't even think of. And it's so important to have those diverse writers around. So if there are any writers out there, um, just go for it. Like I, I feel very supported with my peers, the film industry, particularly the black fellow film industry. We're so small, but we're so supportive of each other. And so we're happy to welcome, you know, new and emerging talent. And I think we just, we just need that new, the new voices because it is an exciting time for black stories like we are going places we're going to space there's going to be a space comedy i'll probably write it that's going to be done soon with an indigenous lens on it and it's exciting to know that that we're shooting for the stars literally so yes just come into the industry give it a red hot go call me up if you you want to be a writer because i'll i will help you i want to be supported too <laughs> Cody Bedford, thank you very much for joining us. And anyone that's joined in to watch us, thank you for coming along for the journey. See you later. Thank you.